I became fascinated with the uh, New Testament a couple of years ago. I was reading it, and I thought, I've lived in America all my life. I've always thought of myself as being very much an American. And yet, in a funny way, I've been out of it in an odd way. I mean, if you're born Jewish, you, you know, it's, that's no longer a problem for the vast majority of Jews. It, we don't go around and say, oh, this is an anti-Semitic country. It used to be maybe in my mother's time, you know, you know, a good many, 70 years ago, but not now. So it isn't that. It isn't that you feel that you're discriminated against, as I say, quite the contrary. But there's this feeling that you're not quite a part of the very center of the country. And, you know, I've known Christians all my life. I've written about them. I, I know them quite well. But I, I didn't know this part. And I, so I read the New Testament. I was absolutely fascinated. And I kept reading it and thinking, that's why they are like this. That's why they are like that. And, of course, I've been familiar with the... Uh, great speeches in, in the New Testament, but to read it as a narrative... You mean the Sermon on the Mount and things like that? Yes. Oh, yeah, all, all of it, you, you, you know. Uh, I mean, there must be, there must be, oh, in all of the, uh, in all the four Gospels, there must be several hundred powerful, memorable speeches that people live by. But one of the things I realize is, is that probably, is that probably most people don't live with the narrative. And the narrative was absolutely fascinating to me. The narrative is the story of Jesus' yes, life. Yes, yes. And I thought, that is the greatest story ever told, and it's been the uh, keel of Western civilization for 500 years now, ever since, mm -hmm. ever since uh, the King James Version of the Bible entered English. Um, and, and I thought, it's such a funny book, the New Testament. That is absolutely from the point of view of a novelist, just reading something the way you'd read another book. Do you think that no one would be more surprised as to what has become in his name as Jesus. Well, I can only think of one person possibly. Who? Karl Marx. <laughs> <laughs> because basically what you say, Jesus says, this is my story in your novel. Yes. This is my story. <laughs> and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they kind of exaggerated it because they were interested in mythology and they were interested in promoting something else. Yes. And this is sort of my story. And it's not quite as dramatic and not quite as heroic and not quite as mythological yes. as their story. Yes. Well, <clears throat> you know, I was saying, let's, let's approach the New Testament from the point of view of the man rather than the divinity. After all, in, in the New Testament, Jesus is the Son of God, who incidentally happens to be a man. Whereas I thought, no, he's a man who, in effect, is anointed by God. Uh, he becomes the Son of God, or he's even born as the Son of God, but he's very much a man. And I thought he's a man, and since he's also Jewish, and I do know a lot about that, <laughs> I thought uh, he, his <laughs> yes. life is filled with worries. He has an extraordinarily heroic life. So you uh, see... Uh, uh, but a, a heroic life filled with concerns. You know, most of the heroes I've known in life are filled with worries all the time. And uh, doubts? Muhammad or? Ali once said to me, you know, with the worries I've got, if I'd been a white man or a businessman, I'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, it, you know, to be, to be a hero, to be a protagonist means that you live with worry all the time. All, all, people who do perform great feats always live with intense worry. And I thought that's the way to write about Jesus. All his concerns, all the things that can go wrong, all the things that are not happening the way he wants now, them to happen. Why is that? Because the responsibility is so large that a hero carries? Well, yes, and also, you know, if they're a hero, then they're trying to do something very important. And if you want to do something important, you know that there are many, many ways in which something important can go badly wrong. And you're relying on other people all the time, and they can go wrong. And, and, uh, and you're concerned. Your, your, your mind is filled with concerns. What was your Jesus, well, what was the son trying to do? What was his goal? What was his purpose? His goal, his goal in, in the New Testament, which I followed in the novel as his goal, was to bring people to a recognition bring the Jews to recognition that their God was the only God to, to confirm that. They believed it before, they would believe it again, but it, it was a time of much disbelief and much paganism, and the Romans had huge power, more power than the Jews. And so his belief was to bring them to God, to have them die for others, in effect, rather than for themselves, to release them from greed, to overcome the temptations of mammon, to die with a pure soul, then they can enter the kingdom of heaven. This has always been the basic belief in Christianity. And, 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 and how do we go from Jesus to Christianity? Well, I don't know what you mean by the question. Well, I mean, well, the I'll notion of... Oh, I'll tell you exactly how we Because Jesus went. is not... Your Jesus is not thrilled by... No. ...by no. the Catholic Church, and he's not thrilled by Rome. The answer is how do we go from Jesus to Christianity is that some very powerful and very ambitious people who 
we're not rich to begin with, were overcome very early with the potentialities of this message. And they built a church, and they built a mighty church. They built the mightiest church in human history. Uh, and then other mighty churches came out of that mighty church. But what I'm getting at is that the answer is Jesus carried the message, and it was human beings who perverted the message, which he could anticipate. It was one of the reasons he worried all the time. Because he knew that they would take his message. He could see they weren't getting all of them. Up. You know, they were much more interested in themselves than they were in the higher reaches of, of the message. Now, mind you, I'm, I come along as a human being, very much a human being, who does yeah. not get all the message either. I'm not pretending that I'm now suddenly a profoundly religious man. My feeling always on this book was write about him as a man. As, as a man, he's immensely interesting, and he was to me. And stay very close to the New Testament, because the moment you stray from it, then you're just showing off as a novelist. You're showing that you can do this or you can do that. Uh, don't write a thousand-page book. Write a small book, almost as small as, as one of the Gospels. Now, all the critics are making the very point you just made, that this story essentially parallels what the Gospels have written. It yes, is essentially it's the same story. Yeah, that was intentional. That was intentional. My editor, Jason Epstein, who's a very good editor, kept talking about the history of the church in the, for the next hundred years and how he wanted it to, uh, you know, how I ought to really start. And my attitude, Jason and, and Jason may have been absolutely right in terms of pleasing the critics. Uh, but finally I said, Jason, look, you've got a wonderful book to write there, and you should write it, and I'll be your editor. <laughs> the, but this one was? This one, this one is an attempt to make a novel out of the central myth, what I would call the keel of Western civilization. This myth is at the very core of, 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 of uh, Western civilization. If people don't like the word myth, I could say this story is at the very center of Western civilization. So I thought it ought to be told by a reasonably good novelist. If I had wanted to write a great book about Jesus, uh, I would have had to throw away the New Testament. I would have had to write an imaginative work that would be a thousand pages long, and at that point everyone would say, oh, it's so beautifully written, but why do you write such long books? What I want, so what I want to do, I want to reach people with this, because I think there's something terribly important, which is I think that Jesus had an incredibly radical message. He had a wonderful, simple message, which is money is evil. And I think that's been lost 